Hello and welcome to this edition of Five TV. I'm your host Brad Swanson. We are coming to you across the internet for this this episode of Five TV. We are uh, joined by none other than President Wilton Simpson. Wilton, uh, thank you for coming on Five TV. We appreciate you. Good morning, Brad. I'm happy to be here. All right. So before we begin, you know, most people in Florida and you know, they're working day to day. They're working at their jobs. They don't really know a lot about all the elected officials in the process. So would you mind? Tell us a little bit about where you come from. Tell us a little bit about Trilby and your childhood. And, uh, and then I'll keep prompting you a little bit about uh, your family and your business after that. Sure. No, I was born here in Lakeland. So when I say in Lakeland um, and then I, we moved to Trilby when I was about 10 years old. And we, I've worked on our farm my whole life. So my dad was in the asbestos removal business and painting business prior to that. And so all of my life, I grew up working here. Um, I got to play, um, I went to high school here in Dade City, played football. And then basically my, my after high school, it's been just a career of work. And, um, and of course, as you know, as growing up through childhood, um, um, and then in my mid forties, I ran for the Florida Senate and, and the rest is history, as they say. I love it. I love it. Okay, so one quick question because I, I had the privilege of I've known you for roughly fifteen years, and you know, hard work. It, for anyone that knows you for about a half a second, knows that hard work defines you. What's the single lesson that your father or your mom impressed upon you that kind of has has contributed to who you are today? Yeah, that's a great question, Brad. And 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 I used to talk to my mom as my mom got older. She would say, "Boy, I wish you could have played." more sports, you know, as adolescents, you know, eight, nine, 10 years old, because the grandkids came along for them and they were able to do those things. And I said, mom, the most important thing you told us was work ethic. And for with work ethic, you can get everything else you need, right? I didn't go to college out of um, high school. I did go back later and get an AA um, later in life. But, um, you know, we did not um, graduate high school thinking we were going to go to the university or a college. We went straight to work and that work ethic you know, it was about do what you say you're going to do, do the right thing, and you can be successful. And so my entire life from a very early age, really eight, nine years old, um, I've worked all my life. And that work ethic is what, you know, any success we've had in life um, from, you know, working has been because of that work ethic. And so it's something we're very proud of. And it's something I've tried to instill in my children to make sure that my two children, by the way, are the first two Simpsons that graduated from the university. Uh, Lauren, my daughter's 30 years old now. My son is 22, um, or about to be 22 in a couple weeks. And um, both of them are the first two Simpsons that graduated from the university. And But I've always stressed a work ethic with them. And um, it's great that they were able to get an education and they're both doing very well. So we're very proud of that. Yeah, well, I would say uh, you and your wife um, and your influence on your kids, which I've had the privilege of meeting in the past, uh, I think I think the apple doesn't fall far from the tree and their collective work ethics uh, show as well. And it's it's evidence. So so good for you, Dad. I'm I'm taking uh, I'm taking notes here for my kids. So. Yeah, well, it's something we're very proud of. And and that's what you hope for. You know, I, I told my children as I've, I'm getting older, I'm 55 now and as I get older and think about, okay, the next generation, right? And when you see that they can work and take care of themselves, that's when that parental worry starts going away. Cause you know, they're doing the right thing. They're working, they can, you know, take care of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I tell you what, it's uh, it's something that we're all, we're all working on. So I'm going to keep uh, pinging you a little bit for notes here and there with yes. uh, my, my three kids. Uh, Absolutely. All right. Well, let's move into the business of the interview here. And when we think about, um, your your presidency, which really started uh, three years ago, and I know it started before that, but it started three years ago when you had to go out and, and raise the funds necessary to, uh, to elect a uh, pro-business Republican Senate. Um, and then as you ascended into the office, you know, how do you think your first year in your presidency went? You know, tell me a little bit about that first year. You know, the first year was riddled. You, you never know how your year is going to go, right? Um, and COVID broke out um, during what would have been the main primary um, opportunity to raise money, you know, to bring the caucus back. So we we were dealing with COVID as a state and as a you know, as obviously as a country. And so it was something that there was a lot of uncertainty. The budget was going to be very tough. 
Um, we needed protections from you know COVID liability protections and things of that nature. And what I had wanted to do all along, obviously, was raise it was raise enough resources to bring back a majority to the Florida Senate to a majority of Republicans and conservatives. And so by doing that, being able to pull that off, then allowed us to go to our normal agenda that we did with a few caveats, right? One of the caveats was we had to, we, we passed what I believe is the best COVID liability bill in the country. Um, we protected Florida businesses that were these essential businesses. During the um, COVID, you know, not one farmer or truck driver or law enforcement or hospital or nursing organization, none of those folks shut down. There's many others I could name, construction, all of the things that were essential workers. And it's something we were very proud of. And it was something also that we were very proud to make sure that we protected them from um, liability because they did do the right thing in the, in, in the, with the uncertainty of not knowing how bad COVID would get at the time. If you go back to April of 2020, this was something that was brand new to all of us. So I knew that would shape uh, part of the presidency. And it was something we were very proud of. Not only did we come through that very well with, with obviously leadership from the governor and, and Speaker Sprouse, but we were able to um, come through that and, and we produced a very fine budget and the COVID liability protections and other things that turned out to be a really good session. So, so we'll, we'll come back to kind of how you led that session in a second here, but, but was, and the question is, is what were you most proud of that, that passed out of the Senate and ultimately became law? Was it uh, the COVID liability protection? Because while it definitely wasn't a given, it was certainly one of the most important pieces passed, but, but was, there, was, was it that or was there something else that, that you, you really sit back on and say, man, amidst that, that storm, we did this or X, Y, and Z? You know, Brian, there's a, a couple of very highly favored things that we did. And, um, you know, we revolutionized the K-12 education system with more parental choice. That was something that was very important. Um, the largest expansion in the history of the country. We also, and something I was very, very proud of, and I hate to do multiple ones when you ask for the single one, but our child welfare reforms, where you know we were trying to get, we are trying to get children more permanency very quickly and early in their life. And the way I look at that is, if you can bring permanency to a child when they're two, three, four, five years old, you're giving a 75, 80 year opportunity for a much better life. And it's something we worked on very hard. It was something I was very proud of, clearly. And, and there are many others, but those are the, the, the top two, I would say, because what I'm looking at there is breaking the cycle of generational poverty. And if you can do that with, you know, you've got to start with this you know, generation, these two, three, four, five-year-olds that are in the system being fostered or, or wanting to be adopted. And so that was some, some things I was very proud of. Yeah, I mean, those are things that you typically don't make the front page of the news, and it's it's interesting, especially when you think of um, uh, school choice and issues like that. Typically, you might you could argue that the media might be adversarial to to what was actually accomplished, and and um, you know it's it's interesting. The COVID headwinds were immense, but you know I'm sure that that those two pieces of policy were weren't an easy fight. No, that's that's right, and so those were very important to us, and we did many other things that we're very proud of. And, um, and, and again, it was all the protocols that we had to do, right? Um, having the uh, people go to the convention center to do testimonials in front of the Senate, to have the testing in the building that we did, being able to operate the Florida Senate this year flawlessly um, with and still take the public input that we took and also keep senators safe, right? We had multiple senators, four or five, if I remember correctly, that come down with COVID during this session. And we isolated them very quickly. We we knew, you know, very quickly we understood it because we were testing and we got them out of the building and we, you know, had a, a whole protocol that all of our staff had to um, to follow. And I will tell you this, the Senate staff, and I presume the entire staff of the building, but the Senate staff in particular did an outstanding job um, with, with COVID and being able to complete their jobs on behalf of the people of the state of Florida. And that's the most, and we forget those little things, but had, had those safety protocols had not been put in place early on, and Kathy Mears, as you know, is my chief of staff, she led the charge on these things, but yeah. had we not got those safety protocols in place very early on, this could have been a completely different session. Yeah, I was, I was about to compliment you. You bring in Kathy Mears, an extremely long-time veteran 
um, of the Capitol on the staff yeah. side and uh, both your leadership and her leadership under you um, was was impressive. Let's talk about leadership, though, when we think about the elected body. The Senate works very differently than the House of Representatives, as you well know. Um, you know, they say the House runs kind of like a military, the general gives orders, and, and that's how a lot of the policy flows. But in the Senate, you, you have 39 other um, compatriots, if you will, both Republicans and Democrats, and they have a lot more um, le- leadership autonomy or or they're their own kind of kind of um, power structures, if you will. How did you how did you lead them? Which is challenging enough when it's not COVID. But how how did you lead them amongst uh, the the COVID pandemic? You know, it's amazing <clears throat> with the senators. We um, obviously have had very good relationships with my colleagues in the Senate, Republicans and Democrats. And so I never tried to go to my colleagues and say, hey, I want you to vote for me for something because I think it's the right thing to do. We we wanted to win the arguments. So we went to our colleagues um, when necessary. And this I can't remember a time where we, you know, they where you go and you sort of um, say, hey, this is a priority of Senate leadership. And will you please support it because it's a priority? We had none of that this year, and I anticipate not having that next year, but we treated our colleagues all equally. We all got elected by half a million people of the state of Florida in our various districts, and we we tried to win based on the merits of the bills that we were passing, and, and it was something that was very gratifying um, this year on the Senate floor that we didn't lose any votes. There was no votes that were in question. I was not ever worried about a committee meeting. I had a great leadership team. When you look at um, President Designate Pasadomo, she'll be official in October, but she did a great job at the rules suite. And when you look at Leader Mayfield, President Pro Tem Bean ran our floor sessions um, quite a bit and was very instrumental in shaping this. Kelly Stargell, our budget chair, we had such a great nucleus of senators on the leadership team. And then obviously, um, working with Leader Book on the Democrat side, we were able to get a lot of bills done that really surprised, I think, a lot of outsiders. Didn't surprise any of us that were in the Senate, but I think it really surprised a lot of people that have been in this process for 20, 30 years. And as I left session, I heard a lot of that, like, oh my God, we, we can't believe the, the amount of legislation, substantial legislation that had been passed this year. And I will tell you, it's because of that leadership team and the respect of those colleagues, Democrats and Republicans alike, that allowed us to get so much done. Yeah, I, I tell you what, well, we know leadership and the, 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 the theme of it, if you will, it always starts at the top. All right, we've got about a minute and a half left, mm-hmm. uh, President. We really appreciate your time. But um, in 30 seconds, how are you looking at the upcoming session? What, what do you think are gonna be the big issues? The big issues, again, this year are going to be the budget, because that's always, we have to get that done, and then redistricting this year. So this year, once a decade, we have to redistrict, and so I suspect we will spend a disproportionate amount of time making sure we do that right. Right. Those will be two huge issues and always uh, very very uh, at the front of the, the top of the newspaper, for sure, for anybody that still reads a newspaper. Yes. All right. So... Um, so as we, we get ready to go, a uh, question we always love to ask all of our friends in the elected process, when you're not fighting for your constituents, with everybody, which everybody knows you do tires, tirelessly, and you're not fighting for the freedom of a, the free world, um, how do you take your mind off it? What do you stream? What do you like to watch uh, when you're not on the clock? And we know you're on the clock more often than not. You know, it's kind of amazing. And during the pandemic, we had to get used to some of this, right? But um, Yellowstone is something we're looking forward to this next season coming out later this year. We watched all the episodes um, leading up to this. And Cobra Kai was the other one. But um, And we watched all those at the beginning of the year when they came out. So that was kind of neat to see a movie from our childhood and then, and then do this follow-up as they're adults. But Yellowstone's been one of my favorite, and um, and we're looking forward to this season coming out. I think it comes out later this year, the the next season. Yeah, I tell you what, it's so it's such an amazing show, and it's one that we just literally can't turn off. But uh, we're glad that uh, the internet and television industry can bring you a slight respite on uh, those two shows to take your mind off the very important work that you do every day for for all of Florida and President Simpson. We're we're grateful for you coming on Fight TV today.